Leopold matrix. There are several methods by which we can do the environmental impact assessment of a project and its various aspects. Matrix method is one such and there are many forms of matrices. In this video, let us discuss about the Leopold matrix which was designed in 1971. This method gives a subjective measurement of the environmental and social impact of a developmental project. Here, the matrix or the table consists of 100 project activities on the horizontal axis and about 88 environmental and social aspects on the vertical axis which are most likely to be affected by any of the project activities. Each cells of the matrix are divided by a diagonal line. The top division is used to mark the magnitude of the impact that the activity will have on the environmental aspect. The bottom division is used to mark the significance of the impact. Both the magnitude and significance are marked or rated on a scale 1 to 10. This table shows an example of the environmental impact assessment by using a Leopold matrix. The scaling done depends upon the judgment of the individual or the assessment committee and it would be backed by the data collected. As you can see in this example, there might be several blank cells and the, those blank cells indicate that the corresponding project activities don't have an impact on the an environmental aspect. For example, in this table you can see a blank cell corresponding to the use of fertilizers and microclimate condition changes. This indicates that for this particular project, the use of fertilizers is not going to have an impact on the microclimate condition changes in that particular zone. The advantages of Leo Leopold matrices are it is a precise assessment technique unlike the lengthy checklist method. It is very fast and easy. Can be used for large scale and small scale project which shows the versatility of the project. The disadvantages are it doesn't explain the extent of impact based on space and time. The method is oversimplified and the numerical values don't provide a comprehensive analysis. The method doesn't explain the connection between any two environmental aspects by which it will fail to explain the secondary and tertiary impact.